in Gaggle and GIMP since last year uh, when I was a Google Summer School student at the same project. And I'm going to talk a little about um, doing open cell support uh, in Gaggle and of course in GIMP. So the main point of this work is about speed performance. So that's why I put this image in the background uh, with many goats running. <laughs> so I don't know if you are, if you all of you are um, know what is Gaggle, but uh, GIMP was designed to process 8-bit images. And one of the points of Gaggle is to uh, solve that by using floating point image and images and many other formats so you can have high depth images. But we have a problem, another problem now, is that floating point processing is intensive, CPU intensive. So how can we improve Gaggle performance? And one of the solutions that we can use is, is um, multi-threading, vectorization, GPU support. So we can use all these uh, very, uh, very uh, powerful uh, hardware that's already present in, in our laptops and desktops to improve this uh, processing. But what what exactly is OpenCL? Any of you uh, have read use uh, OpenCL or have any idea about it? Okay, not much. I'll explain a little. So, OpenCL is uh, it's a language that where we can write code that's going to be running parallel in GPUs and multi-core CPUs and even FPGAs, and it's also an API to control these OpenCL devices that are the CPUs and GPUs. And it does a specification. Uh, it's very like uh, OpenGL by the same consortium. So uh, it's a pub public API that theoretically anyone can uh, just uh, follow it and make an implementation. So uh, just an uh, example of OpenCL code. We can see at the app a uh, very simple code uh, where we uh, pass the image and change brightness and contrast. And uh, at the bottom, you can see the OpenCL program that did the same thing. Uh, the main point here is that we just don't have uh, this outer loop because uh, we'll see later that uh, OpenCL basically removes that and it scales uh, this code from the bottom to the all processors that you have. And by all processors, I mean GPUs and multi-core CPUs. This is done uh, automatically. So at the code of, code of the bottom, uh, you can see that at the first line you get a uh, get global ID. That's basically that we get an index that we can, for example, in this application we use to in the image, and we can load data, save data. It's completely independent from the other tasks. That's the power of OpenCL because if you can uh, put our problem is in, in this form. Uh, it scales automatically. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, the common flow in an OpenCL program is that first we will write code in using the OpenCL language. So sometimes we have problems that are very easy to make in parallel, sometimes not. But uh, this usually is the hard task. After that, you have to detect the open cell device. And we can, have, we can have many devices in the same machine. For example, if, we have, I, if I have a multi-core CPU and a GPU in my laptop, I have two uh, open cell devices. So what happens is that uh, open cell is a shared library that vendors uh, deliver with uh, the hardware, or of course, uh, uh, open source implementation. But uh, so each device has its own uh, version of the open cell library. After we specify which device we're going to use, we have to build our uh, our code. What that means is that we are doing a just-in-time compilation. And basically, inside your code, I don't know uh, if you've seen, but the code in the bottom will be a string inside our code that we co compiled. And with that, we can have um, some kind of like OpenGL. We can guarantee that our code uh, will run in many platforms because we are not distribution distributing a binary, we are distributing the source code together with the program. After that, we have to transfer uh, our input data to the device because OpenCell uh, uh, supposes that any device has its own memory, so we have to transfer data. So, for example, if you have a GPU, we'd have to use the PCI Express to transfer this data and process that. If it's a, if it's a CPU, we just copy data to, to that. So after that, we run uh, the open cell program, for example, the brightness contrast, and transfers the data back from the device, which is our final result. So, uh, Today, we have proprietary implementations from vendors, and we have no uh, comp complete uh, open source implementation. And uh, I think that this is going to change because Mesa is a red, uh, uh, video driver Mesa is a red uh, developing that. It was also a Google Summer of Code project last year. And I think that my project using OpenCL in Gaggle and GIMP may maybe another argument to have an open source open cell implementation because you need that. Yeah, uh, no, it's for GPUs too. We can uh, we can use for, for both. That's OpenCell above. Yeah, you can write our code in the OpenCell language, and it's going to run in CPUs or and GPUs. Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, yeah exactly. You can support both, and that's it. So basically, uh, what I have done, uh, I've done uh, automatically the transfer to the open cell device when necessary. So basically, I'm going to list the points I will ex explain later. I have conversion between color spaces in open cell. Gallo. Uh, I've worked a lot also about having a simple API so we can write OpenCL operators, filters in Gaggle very easily. Benchmarking, 
of course and uh, we had integrated this, co uh, this work in the next videos of GIMP and show that it so okay um, this is a a simple gaggle graph uh, I don't know uh, in gaggle you organize uh, the processing graph where we have the input nodes that here are loading load image one two and three and have the operators that are intermediate nodes that basically you have inputs then they process and have outputs and this way you have a non destructive uh, non stop destruction workflow because we have the inputs and the outputs and never uh, we he write uh, uh, our data. So the first, uh, my first try about the problem was to make each operator as independent. So uh, basically here, for example, uh, at the invert operator, Okay, if it's going to be, if they are going to be run in this GPU, I transfer data from the CPU to the GPU, process, and transfer back. Then, uh, at the next step, at the overlay operator, I do, I do, I do the same thing. So, uh, the problem with this approach is that at the red squares, you can see that basically we write data for, uh, to the GPU and read again, and that what happens that this is very slow because communication with the GPU is uh, is very expensive. So uh, basically, this was a bottleneck in the application, and. The way I solved that was creating some kind of cache uh, scheme over the GPU memory. So basically what happens is that I have the GPU memory and I use the GPU memory as a cache on top of the main memory. So each operator before being run verify if its inputs are already in the cache and if not, they bring it, uh, the operator brings the inputs and writes the inputs at the cache. So basically, it does nothing. Just let the result at the GPU and the next operator verifies. So one of the points about this implementation is that you can have policies about the GPU memory use. For example, if the GPU memory is full, and uh, we can just uh, write back uh, the oldest uh, used uh, buffer. So this is a, I, I, thought, I think this is a good way to organize the, the application and it's already working fine. Another point was about color conversion. And that's because some operators are much easily described in some color space. For example, brightness, contrast runs in the RGBA float uh, color space. But what happens if you have inputs and outputs or outputs uh, buffers in another format? For example, this happens in GIMP uh, for now. We have the canvas that has RGBA uh, U8, but uh, gag operators can, can run on RGBA float. There is Babel that it's a library that makes, uh, it's very specialized in color conversion. Uh, but what happens is that if we bring data back, do color conversion using Babel and transfer back, we have a lot of, a lot of performance hits because of that, so I mapped the common, the most common 
color conversion and implemented that in OpenCL. So basically there are more or less 20 uh, color conversion uh, uh, functions in OpenCL now in, the, in Gaggle. Also, uh, I have a point operator, operations API. So here I'm going to show uh, what we should do, what should we write to have OpenCL support in a Gaggle operation. In yellow, you can see that we have a string with the OpenCL code that have in the input, output, and parameters that are contrast and brightness. And we, we just do the operation. And at the end, we, we register the string as the cell source. That, that's just it. It's a very uh, independent architecture. Things are, uh, are under the scenes. So it's very easy to write uh, uh, open cell operator. So, uh, well, the point of the work was to get uh, speed ups. So, benchmarks are here. So, uh, I'm, I'm benchmarking Gaggle with just one thread. So, I'm using just one processor. And Gaggle with OpenCell. So, uh, what happened it was that when I first tried to benchmark it, uh, was that uh, use OpenCL, I had a, a lot of, of uh, speed up. And the problem was that I was using Windows to, <laughs> to make the benchmarking. And for now, uh, Gaggle is not very optimized in Windows, and there are problems with compiler, compiler flags that I have to enable. And so I spent a lot of time thinking that just by using OpenCL, uh, I was having a huge speed up, even in, uh, using the same C CPU. But, well, profiling is hard. <laughs> so uh, what happens now is just uh, it's a more sensible result. And I have a NVIDIA GPU and an Intel Core i5 CPU here. And brightness contrast is a very simple operation that you have seen. That just uh, we just pass over the image one time and make two floating points operations in for each pixel. So what happens here is that the overhead of using OpenCL and copying uh, the image is much bigger than the speed up that you get. And one point is that with OpenCL, we have multi-thread uh, support for free because the OpenCL implementation does that already. Uh, so, but even though we, we haven't much gains in the CPU, but the GPU, uh, we, have, we had a lot of good results and it's running nice. Here I have um, a much more expensive filter, that's bilateral filter. And we see that in the CPU, we have more or less five times the, the performance that it's what, what it's expected because my, the computer has four cores, then have four threads and have four times speed up. And the GPU uh, really outperforms them because, well, GPUs are very, uh, uh, very good at floating point proce processing. So uh, that's it. Here it's a graph with some of the filters uh, I implemented. Uh, there are basically, I implemented more or less 30 uh, gag operations with OpenCL. And you can see that the blue bar is the GPU. And 
we can see that the GPU had a, a great speed up in most of them. Other because it has more bandwidth, so we can even for point operations just we have good performance. And when we have operations like uh, box blur or bilateral filter that have a lot of floating points operations, uh, the GPU out for outperforms them most. So. OpenCL is a portable and efficient, efficient way to write filters in Gaggle game. I say portable because uh, my OpenCL code will run uh, at the CPU, multiple CPUs, GPUs, and we have it, it is performance portable. So because it is compiled at runtime by the, the OpenCL library. So we can expect that just by having one binary, uh, you have performance in, main, uh, in all architectures with OpenCL. So it's a good way to uh, distribute uh, the application because we don't have to, for example, have one binary for I don't know, one processor and one binary for another because the OpenCL uh, implementation will compile it in, under the scenes and we have performance on both. So it's a good way to. Uh, seeing that there is a, a huge performance boost using GPUs, so uh, that was the point of the work. On CPUs, we gained a multi-core support for free. So, well, this is good because uh, uh, using threads is very hard. And we gained that by almost no effort. So the wall work, 91 commits, almost 500. Uh, 15,000 lines change and the work is already in master in Gaggle, in Gaggle and uh, will be released at the next release of GIMP. <laughs> so uh, basically what's left to be done at this work uh, we need still a lot of testing because basically uh, just me and Pippin uh, have used that. And we need to please test it at your GPUs. Uh, sometimes the code just doesn't work on, on a GPU and we need to address these, these bugs that may exist. We need to port uh, to have more operations in OpenCL. And I also need multi multiple GPU support. So there are people who have two, G two G GPUs, three, and we may use all of them for processing. At the time, I just used uh, the default uh, device. Also, it would be great to have an OpenGL output node, node for Gaggle. So we can just uh, present uh, the image from the, directly from the GPU. We don't have to bring the data back from the GPU to, this, to the me main memory to display it. So basically, the more GIMPs, GIMP uses Gaggle, uh, we'd have more performance gains, gains about with this work. So as GIMP is advancing towards using more gavel, you have more, more performance. So thanks a lot. Uh, uh, I don't know, questions, if you want.
Uh, well, uh, Gaggle has some uh, unstable, I think, support for t using threads, common threads, no open CL. But, well, uh, that's not the point of, of the work. Uh, was more, more about just using OpenCL, but uh, Gaggle already has uh, threading support, common. But it doesn't use OpenMP, I think, just P threads. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I, I think that it's not OpenCL that's slow. It's that I have to buy the architecture of the of Gaggle. I had to make a copy of the data each time. So, um, yeah. If you can just uh, do, do things using uh, OpenMP and P threads, maybe that's the uh, a way. But I haven't tried. Well, uh, I I profiled uh, all of the results that I showed ha include uh, a color conversion uh, on both ends. So, uh, Okay, and more. Ah, yeah, uh, that's a good question. There, there is, for example, here, uh, monomixer operations that this, uh, well, uh, well, for example, brightness contrast is a very light operation that um, we, have, we do almost nothing with the data. So, that basically is a, a measure of the of the bandwidth of the device. So it's uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, it's it's oh, it's better like the CPU is the usual implementation. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah they, in the API I've done, there is a, an option that you, ha uh, that you uh, specify what neighborhood that you need for, for processing. So include the neighborhood to... Um, no, because uh, uh, OpenCL is parallel. So I have, for example, a square of one megapixel, and that's the, a task. And it processes that in parallel. Ah, yeah, of course. That, yeah. Well, I think that, well, it, because what happens that the simple, at least a simple version of implementation, if it's slow, using that, it's slow on the CPU too, so. Okay. 
serialization. What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. That that was about the the, the cache scheme scheme. If I had at the middle, yeah, if I have at the middle a node that doesn't work in the GPU, I bring data there back, and that's it. But if I have a chain that everything is in the GPU, I have no transfers transfers back. So I get the performance. Okay. Yeah, it includes. It, it it's uh, everything. So even for the private contracts it reports first the OPCL version running from the CPU, that it calls the long extra copy that didn't happen if you had a chain of OPCL Yeah, uh yeah, if I have more yeah. if I have main operations uh in the GPU, uh in a chain, I'd I would expect more speed ups. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good question. I have to remove tiles in with OpenCL because it, the GPU likes big te textures to work. So that's uh, overhead too. Uh, that's included in the numbers. Okay. Any more questions? Well, I I think that NG, directly NGPU in the last three four years have uh, open source support. I think. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> I don't know. I suppose the older the, the the newer the best, the better, of course, because it's a it's a new thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, if you you use Gaggle in your application. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you you use Gaggle in your application, have GPU support, of course, because already included. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> 